Welcome to the week 10 broadcast of the FM Home Loans AFI League. What a season it's been up to now. We're going to take a look back at week nine, week 10. Take a look forward to week 11. Why don't you sit back, relax, enjoy. We're coming to you live from headquarters in Jerusalem, Merakodesh. It's windy, it's rainy, it's cold, but we're live with your host, Rafi Crystal Weiss. It's all coming up next on the FM Home Loans AFI League broadcast. So week 10, we're coming up to week 11. That means only a few more weeks of regular season football before the playoffs. That means a lot of teams only have uh, two more games, possibly four. Some teams have even locked it in like Torres Chaim. They're done for the season. They're done at 10, 6, and 2. A lot of other teams right now fighting for really seeding. Yeah, every division has a few teams at the end fighting for playoffs like Blue Shells, Going against OA Huskies, but most teams know that they're in the playoffs or maybe know they're out. But for most teams, it's about the seeding. Seeding is very, very important. You know, to, to, to be an 8 seed versus a 7 seed means you could be playing Pizzeria Front in the, in the second round or possibly the third round instead of playing a, 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 a 2 seed, uh, a, a different type of team in the later rounds and even in the earlier rounds. A lot of teams right now are fighting for seeding. A lot of teams right now are also fighting for working on their playbook, working on the things that work, working on the things that don't work. A lot of teams still need the last couple of weeks, the last few games to really gel together, to really come together as a squad, as a team, really get down their playbooks, really get down their defenses, their zones, their man, their zone offense, which we always speak about. Teams must have a few plays when it comes down to the zone. That is big time. Other things looking up in the league right now, it looks like star players are starting to come back from all teams. Either players that were from injuries, Cyprus, not there because of baby, whatever it was, they are starting to come back. Another thing you have to keep in mind is teams must, must get their game plan down. Right now, you should really have a main game plan. You should really know what your game plan is. Basically, weekend, week out, basically the same. Obviously, you always wanna make a couple adjustments based on teams you're playing. But you wanna know who you are right now. You wanna have the same type of game plan as games go into the playoffs, especially when the playoffs start. But right now, right now, a few weeks before the playoffs, is that time where you gotta say, hey guys, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do it every game. We're gonna do it in the playoffs, and you have to keep to it. I spoke to, uh, I spoke to at least one player, and he told me, you know, we have a game plan, we're just not executing it. We're not sticking to it. And that, you know, that's a little bit of a shame. That, 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 that's not really a team being together. A team being together is a team that's going to stick to the game plan, going to stick to what they have going into the game, and they're all going to be on the same page. You can't have a game plan and have half the team doing the game plan and half the team not doing the game plan. You have to know who you are, what you are, before you get on that field, and you got to stick to it and really excel in it. And you got to build off of it every play, every drive, every game, every week, into the playoffs, all the way into the Holy Land Bowl. And I think that's what a lot of teams are working on, trying to screw it tighter, trying to get it a little more formation, try to really get to know themselves, their game plan, they're going in. Obviously, you have to know your opponent. So based on your opponent, you, have, you might have to make a few adjustments. You might have to say, hey, we're playing a team with a great wide receiver. We got to take two guys and we got to place them on him. We got to shut him down. Hey, we're playing against a big D line. We got to take him out of the game. And that's really what I think when you're playing up against a team that has a superstar or maybe even two superstars, you really have to say, you really have to make a game plan for those players and really say, you know, they're not going to beat us. You know, we had the Rebish of Vikings a few weeks ago do a lot of tape work on the Merikaz Moose and they say, they said, we are going to at least attempt to take Shragi Parrots out of the game. And they were very, they were, they were very good. Obviously, Shragi, it's hard to shut him down. He even got a couple touchdowns. I even think he got some touch, some, some touchdowns, a lot of grabs. But at the same time, they had that game plan and they stuck to it. They ended up getting a victory. They did end up getting a win versus Merikaz, which was their first loss of the season. But I think the key here is that they had a game plan, they stuck to it. And even more importantly, they 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 were able to really spell out what is great about the other team. What's their what's their you know their big their big guy, their big superstar. If we take this guy out of the game, you know what? It's going to be a lot harder for them to beat us. And that's what I think is the main point. The main Nukuda is when you take a team that has major players, major superstars, and you say, hey, we're going to take out that guy. At least we're going to attempt to take out that guy. You know why? Because that gives us the best chance of winning. 
And I think, as, as, as we'll say later in the show, a lot of these teams, they really have strength on one end. A lot of them don't really have big strength. You know, they might be good or above average or average at most positions, but usually that superstar is that one, one, that one player, that two player, that wide receiver, that D-line, that quarterback. You know, quarterback obviously is hard to stop, but that, you know, players that really are the bread and butter, really are the difference in the games. And if you could take them out, you have a much better chance of winning. Another thing to keep in mind as the season heads up into the playoffs is the composure. Composure is a thing that when you're playing against, when you're in the big moments in the big games, you know, a lot of time it's good to be fired up, but you want a balance of fired up and composure. Once you lose composure, what that does is that your, your teammates, you know, really have to try to control you. Your teammates really have to try to you know, get you calmed down, get you back to a balance. And what that does, that hurts their game. You know, we saw in the last weeks a lot of personal fouls, a lot of personal fouls that end up in first downs, especially we saw a lot of them on third downs, which instead of it being fourth and long, it's an automatic first down. And most of them are coming because guys do not have composure, especially the young guys in this league. They're fired up. I think they're getting a little too fired up to the point where they forget they're playing flag football. They think this is tackle. They think they can shove a guy out of bounds, and that's not going to be a flag. And the refs are calling that. The refs are looking for that. I, I do believe there's three different types of personal fouls, but most of them if not all of them, come with a free first down. So when you're a defender out there, especially if your guy's falling out of bounds or whatever it is, usually when you go for the wrap, actually, and you get a little contact, but you, the referee sees you going for the flag, you won't be called You won't be called the penalty. But if you just push a guy and you just tackle a guy, there you're going to tack on at least 10 yards and a first down. And I'm seeing a lot of penalties becoming game changers in games. Now, they're very subtle, and sometimes you have to go back to the tape, and you, have, you really have to be looking for it. But what's happening a lot of times is that the moment, the moment that these penalties are happening, happening key moments, key drives, key plays of the drives, and they're resulting in game-changing moments, first downs, which are leading to touchdowns sometimes. So we want to be balanced. We want to know who we are. We want to have composure. We want to all be on the same, the same, the same page. We want to have a game plan. We want to know what the other time, other team has to offer. Who their superstars stop them. Make sure they don't win the game for that team. All these things have to be have to be really discussed. And you know, during the week, during practice, is the best. But at least before the game, come a half hour, an hour before the game, and really not just practice, but really talk to the teammates and make sure. Everybody's on the same page, and that's why I love to see a leader, a coach, a guy really leading the squad and be able to call up the shots, but also the guys be able to macabre it, the guys be able to you know, take it and really agree with it and really play with that mindset of all being together and following the leader. Friday games got started early this past week. The games got started at, I believe, 9 in the morning. It was the Team Turtles taking on Red Dovies Klasina. Red Dovies Klasina getting two Ws. 19-6-9-6. They're playing good right now. It was just one Chesson continuing their hot streak for sure way. 34-0, 25-0. Look for this team. Might be able to pull off a major upset come playoff time. Bear Jews sticking with their winning streak. 19-13 and 7-0 versus the mother of the Blue Jays. KYHS playing a tough Team Caleb. Team Caleb, they're sticking to their winning streak. They won both games, 15-6 and 19-0. The Ram Caters and the LA Boys split. In game one is the Ram Caters, 19-0. Game two, LA Boys coming back, 22-14. Yeshiva League pass. They continued on their winning streak, beating mother of the Blue Jays, 19-6 and 22-14. 26 to 6. It was the doghouse getting their two W's 20 nothing and 20 to 12. And then multi Shabbos, it was a big matchup in one of the tiers. You had um the the, the Service King Spartans taking on the Joe's Eagles. Service King Spartan behind Nussie Felder able to get two W's very impressively over Joe's Joe uh, Joe's Eagles 13 nothing 25 7. The big game actually for the for, for the division was Orlo and the Mobsters, the Mobsters shutting out Orlo in both games, six nothing, fourteen nothing. Orlo, you gotta head, you Orlo, you gotta head back to the draw, drawing board before the playoffs. You gotta figure it out. There's no reason you should be able to score points against a team like the Mobsters. You're better than them. Um, unfortunately, what I saw this past game was a a little a little uh, flumbustered. Uh, where Orlo, you know, not able, not you know, didn't have that composure, that compassion, that you know. They really got to go back to the drawing board, figure it out again, because this is a major wake-up call, and for them, it was good that it happened before the playoffs. They got to bounce back from that. 
It was the 08 Huskies always playing pesky football, taking on the YLE Batches. It looks like they're back in a groove right here now, winning both games 12 6 and 26 behind the Ivy's Earned Yashi Share. Torres, Clive, and Mercas moves in the game of the week, possibly the game of the season. Two old rivals getting together. It was Merkaz Musin. Able to get a 6-0 lead. Holding on to it. Stopping Torres Chaim. Getting that shutout W. Once again, Merkaz Musin proving they are pos they are definitely the top defense in this league. Probably them and Pizzeria Frat. In game two, Torres Chaim had this game in the bag. Up 7-0 under a minute. And you're throwing the football? When you can take down the clock on third down to 20 seconds? I didn't understand the call at all. Once again... Me personally, I, I, I just think it's a combination of ego and, and really just not, not paying respect to the game, not following protocol and, and giving your defense, you know, with 20 seconds. You're, if your defense can't win it on that, you don't deserve to win. That's what it comes down to. If you can't stop a team with 15, 20 seconds left, then you don't deserve to win. But to take a risk to throw the ball... Unexcusable. Mecca's moves in picking up the football, and they went and drove down the field. They were able to get a touchdown after a little controversy. Then the last play of the game, a little more controversy. Looked at it. They had the game in the bag on the two-point version, going for two, getting the two-point conversion. But at the end of the day, it did not hold up as the two-point conversion got called back because they said that the quarterback was missing the flag. A defender was close enough before the ball got out of the hand, and they called that play back. You know, it, it could be that got the right call, you know, and I love the refs and they're amazing refs, you know. I hear it. I hear it. I hear the pain from both sides. I, uh, uh, You know, it's rough to lose like that. 7-6. Torres Chaim gets that W. Both teams split. Mary Kai Moosin taking their second loss of the season. It was a rubbish of Vikings playing with the Blue Shells who were playing their further playoff fighting lives. Blue Shells able to tie both games 7-7. 7-7. Very, very impressive. It was DEC. Playing Pizzeria Frat. Here we go again. DEC not showing up in game one. Pizzeria Frat taking an easy, an easy W. Um, 13, 13, 12 nothing game one. Now DEC coming back in game two. Fired up Donnie Eastman going in and as a quarterback. We spoke about this last week that Rabbi Coach Katz might have to make a, some, a, a, some tough calls in the playoffs because he's got so much talent. And I said if something's not working out. Then make a switch, make an adjustment. You have to do that. You have too much talent on the team. You gotta go back to the run game, DC. You gotta go back to it. You got a big O line. You got Moshe Share. You got Gato Nazoli. You got Don Eastman. I, you might even have your Rukum Pliner. You gotta go back to that run game. The run game, the play action, go back to it. That's DC football, the ground and pound, physical ball. Get back to it. Playoff time, you gotta be there. In game two, they were up 13-0 with the ball. It was about half the, I believe it was even more than half the game down. And it was turnover, and it was a loss of downs, a loss of downs. And in the end, Pizzeria Frat not going down, not giving up. Scoring twice, getting an interception, a quick touchdown, getting the ball back, another touchdown to sneak away another W. Pizzeria Frat, we've seen it all season long. This team wins close games. This team is never, you can never call them out. This team's a fighting team. They always come back. They proved it again. Svi Sklar and Levi Sklar were basically unstoppable again. Game one made a huge difference in game two. We will talk about how to defeat this team if you're America. I hope you're listening later on in the show. But once again, DEC, you got to close that out. Time management. You got to make sure you're not making mistakes. Once again, teams, if you are winning and you're up by two touchdowns, you gotta change your game plan a little. You gotta play it safe. You gotta trust your defense. You can't just throw it up anymore. You gotta play a certain way based on the score. And they were not able to do that. And because of that, Pizzeria Frock getting that W. BDMG really hot right now, getting two Ws versus Blue, Big Blue, shutting them out, no problem. In game one, it was, in game one, it was 20, in game one, it was, uh, 26 to 0, I believe, in game two, 28 0, winning both those games by a big score. Very impressive BDMG. Once again, this is a team we were high on in the beginning of the season. Right now, playing really hot, playing really well. Very impressed with them. I, if I'm a team, I don't want to see this team in the playoffs. Noam Gelb, he's got the composure, the balance. He's not bugging out. They're playing very good. Very impressed with how they're playing. Let's turn to this upcoming week. We got a couple big matchups. We got America's obviously the game of the week, possibly the game of the season, play, playing Pizzeria Front. America's got to win both these games to be able to still have a shot at getting that top seed, getting that top division. If not, 
uh, it will be Pizzeria and Fraud taking that. Other big games to keep in mind, playoff uh, implications definitely across the board. Uh, Blue Shells playing Wiley Bachelors. They definitely want to get a W. Oh, wait, Huskies. If they could get two W's versus Big Blue and Blue Shells lose both games to YLE, YLE, YLE Bachelors, you know, we're going to have an interesting thing. You know, I think we might even have a tie. We might even have a tie when it's all said and done, and, or could, it possibly probably will come to the final week. But OA Huskies, you know, could tie it up this week. They're not out of it yet. They got to big, big, they got to beat Big Blue twice. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. They got to do it. Big Blue is going to try to be, you know, they're going to try to play spoiler ball, but they got to do it. They got to win that game. We turn to the Americas, Moose and Pizzeria Frat. If you want to beat Pizzeria Frat. A few things. Once again, obviously, you got to stop the Sklar brothers on the D-line, Svi Sklar and Levi Sklar. Ah, you want to tell me that's impossible. I hear you. You want to tell me that Svi Sklar and Levi Sklar, unless you put maybe five blockers on them, you're probably not going to do anything. And what happens if you put three blockers on them? Chains are pizzeria, Frat's going to rush three. I personally don't mind that because you could always let a tight end loose or you, 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 at least you'll get more time or a wide receiver's got to chip Svi. Something's got to happen with that. But really, on the offense, you really can't Make any big mistakes. Tzvi Sklar could get his sacks. Levi Sklar is going to get his sacks. They're going to put on pressure. Probably. You're not going to stop that all game. But what you could do is you can make a mental note that you're not going to turn the ball over. You're not going to give them easy field position. Because I really do believe with their injuries, and if their top wide receiver is not there, they're definitely an offense that is stoppable. And I think Merkaz Moussa could, you know, if they don't do any, give any turnovers, they should be able to hold Pizzeria Frat to one touchdown each game. That's a bold prediction, but I'm going to make it here. Once again, Merkaz Musin should be able to hold Pizzeria Frat to one touchdown each game if they don't make any turnovers. That's my prediction. If you do that, if you do that, you give your, chance, you give your shot a chance to win. I'm not, I'm not saying it's going to be easy to score against Pizzeria Frat. And I think a lot about it is those short passes. And I think the running game does work if you have one. And once in a while, maybe if you have a shot long, you take it long because you got to believe in your receivers. you got to believe Shraggy Parrots. You got to believe in him. And you got to believe in Rudman. And you know what? Maybe you do take a couple shots long because that's your game sometimes. And you, should, you don't want to go completely off your game. But I do believe that they have a big opportunity to shut down Pizzeria Fraud's offense for the most part if they don't give up any turnovers. And we haven't really seen that yet. We've seen a lot of teams keep it close for his Pizzeria Fraud, not give up a lot of points, but make crucial turnovers, which leads to Pizzeria Frat scoring, because Pizzeria Frat's a great team scoring off turnovers, and usually that results in Ws for Pizzeria Frat. And we turn to the top five in the FM Home Loans AFI League. Coming at number five in the FM Home Loans AFI League, Week 10 Power Rankings, number five. This team is coming back. They're making a little comeback. They're getting hot at the right time again. Championship team, championship players on this team. I do think some of the players need to even make a further step up. They got to believe in themselves. They got to believe they're a championship team. Everybody's got to be on the same page, but they can do it. Number five, Y, L.E. Bachelors. Coming to number four, trying to fit the pieces right in the puzzle late in the season. Got to hold on to W's. Got to play smart football. Got to play together. Just because you have a stars doesn't mean you're together. You got to be stars and together. Number four, D-E-C. Coming to number three, this offense must turn it up before the playoffs. They must be able to score more points. They must have set plays. They must have more camaraderie. Number three, Toros. Chai. Number two, can they use this last week to motivate them? In the playoffs, all the way to the championship. It's championship or bust. We had them on the show. We had Mo Fiennes out. He said it. They got to come back together. Play with fire, but balance. Number two, Merkaz, Moose. And the number one team in the FM Home Loans A5 League Power Rankings. The big bad, the big bad, big, big machine. The team in purple. All the way from Efrat. They're heating up that pizza. Cheese with some toppings. They're veteran players. They play with a lot of skill and a lot of smarts. Number one, Pizzeria Efrat. And there's your top five power ranking sponsored by the FM Homelands A5 League. Have an amazing night. Amazing Shabbos Kadesh. We'll see you on the other side.